On April 24, 2023, South Korean President Yoon suk yeol arrived in the United States, stepping onto a red carpet as he disembarked from the plane, marking the beginning of his seven-day visit. Observers noted that in contrast, the reception for Chinese Communist Party leader Xi Jinping upon his arrival in the U.S. by special plane was comparatively modest, lacking even a red carpet. Additionally, it has been observed that while the tension in China-U.S. relations is widely recognized, there seems to be a subtle yet positive shift in the dynamics of U.S.-South Korea relations. Data shows that by December 2023, the U.S. had become South Korea's largest export market, surpassing China for a period of time. This indicates a shift in the U.S.-South Korea relationship under the new geopolitical climate. According to the South Korean Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy's report in December and annual import-export trends released on January 1, 2023, South Korea's exports to China amounted to $124.8 billion in 2023 a 20% decrease compared to the previous year. Imports from China were approximately $142.8 billion, a 7.6% decrease, leading to a trade deficit of $18 billion for the year. This marks the first trade deficit with China in 31 years, as China shifts from being South Korea's largest trade surplus partner to its largest trade deficit nation. In contrast, in the same year, South Korea's exports to the U.S., reached a record high of $115.7 billion, a 5.4% increase, while imports were about $71.3 billion, a 13% decrease, resulting in a $44.5 billion trade surplus. South Korea's exports to the U.S. have been growing for five consecutive months, reaching their highest proportion since 2002 at 18%. In December, South Korea's exports to the U.S. amounted to $11 billion, $4 billion more than to China, making the U.S. South Korea's largest trade surplus partner for the first time in 21 years. A trade surplus occurs when a country's export income exceeds its import expenditure in a certain period, such as a year, half-year, quarter, or month. A trade deficit means the opposite. If a country's total exports exceed its imports, it indicates a favorable position in foreign trade. Otherwise, it is in a passive position. It remains uncertain whether this change will become a norm. Officials from the South Korean Ministry of Trade, Industry, and Energy explain that export trends depend on the performance of export products and the domestic demand of each country. For instance, in 2023, South Korea's highest semiconductor exports were to China, while the highest automobile exports were to the U.S. If this trend continues, South Korea's exports to China might also improve. However, some observers believe this is unlikely, as the slowdown in exports to China and improvement in exports to the U.S. is not a sudden phenomenon. The U.S. is the only country among South Korea's top 10 export partners that has seen export growth in the past five years. Prominent battery manufacturers LG Energy Solution and SK On, alongside Samsung SDI, a producer of batteries and electronic materials, spearhead South Korea's investment efforts. Along with solar energy firm Hanwha Qcells, these companies represent South Korea as key international investors in the U.S. semiconductor and clean technology sectors. Meanwhile, in October 2023, the South Korean presidential office announced that Samsung Electronics and SK Hynix would be allowed by the U.S. to indefinitely supply American chip equipment to their factories in China without individual U.S. approval. The U.S. Department of Commerce is currently updating its validated end-user list to indicate which entities can receive exports of certain technologies, enabling Samsung and SK Hynix to continue supplying certain U.S. chip manufacturing tools to their factories in China. Once listed, they will not need individual export licenses. In contrast, China's importance is declining. Research by the Korea International Trade Association shows that since 2021, South Korea's export share to China has decreased in sectors such as petroleum products, petrochemicals, steel, auto parts, and displays. Data indicates that China's share of South Korean exports peaked at about 27% in 2018 and has been declining since, falling to 20% in 2023. For instance, compared to the first quarter of 2022, South Korea's battery exports to China decreased by 39% in the first quarter of 2023, but increased by 51% to the U.S. Over the same period, petrochemical products to China decreased by 26%, but increased by 4.5% to India, and petroleum products to China decreased by 21%, but increased by 38% to Australia. 
This shift highlights South Korea's warming relations with other countries, while exports to China weaken. Why is this happening? From the perspective of China-South Korea relations, the South Korean Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy attributes this China down, US up change mainly to export reasons. A report by the Korea Institute for International Economic Policy released in December 2023 titled Trends and Implications of Supply Chain Restructuring in the Era of Economic Security, shows that the phenomenon of declining export share to China and increasing import share is particularly evident in intermediate goods trade. These account for up to 60% of South Korea's foreign trade. The export share of intermediate goods to China has been declining since 2018, dropping from an annual average of over 30% in the first decade of this century to 24% in 2023. The import share, on the other hand, has been continuously rising, reaching 30% in the first 10 months of last year. Moreover, institutions like KIEP and the Korea Institute for Industrial Economics and Trade point out the impact of intermediate goods trade. In its 2024 Economic and Industrial Outlook released in December 2023, KIET analyzed two structural factors behind the weakness in exports to China the rising self-sufficiency rate of Chinese intermediate goods and the declining competitiveness of South Korea in the Chinese import market. The first point, regarding the rising self-sufficiency rate of Chinese intermediate goods, can be traced back to a series of sanctions imposed by the U.S. to reduce global supply chain dependence on China and restrict the CCP's access to advanced semiconductor technology. To improve its self-sufficiency rate in key areas, like semiconductors, the CCP has even resorted to poaching talent and theft from major South Korean companies. In December 2023, a Mr. Kim, an employee of Samsung Electronics, was arrested by South Korean prosecutors. According to reports from the Donga Ilbo and other media, citing legal sources, he is accused of leaking 18 nanometer DRAM technology, a core national technology of South Korea, to China's largest DRAM manufacturer, Changshin Memory Technologies. Prosecutors allege that Mr. Kim stole chip manufacturing processes through photography and recording, causing an estimated loss of approximately $1.8 billion to Samsung Electronics and its partners. Due to the involvement of dozens of individuals, prosecutors plan to expand the scope of their investigation. This is not the first time such an incident has been reported in South Korea. In June of the same year, a former executive of Samsung Electronics, Choi jin Seog, was arrested for allegedly stealing core semiconductor technology from Samsung. He also attempted to replicate Samsung's semiconductor factory in Xi'an. According to statistics from the National Intelligence Service, from 2018 to November 2023, there were 39 cases of semiconductor technology leaks abroad reported by the agency alone, more than five times the number from 2012 to 2017. China is the primary destination for these leaks. Choi Jun Young, a professional consultant at the Korean law firm Yulchon, noted in an interview that the U.S. has stricter controls on semiconductor technology than any other field. He said, as a result, the CCP is trying to establish a complete semiconductor ecosystem, making the experience and talent of professionals all the more important. Choi added, one trend in the CCP's talent poaching is to focus on large companies' subcontractors, as these companies have lower wages and relatively less stringent security. Due to frequent leaks of confidential information raising concerns about compromised competitiveness, in August 2023, numerous South Korean lawmakers initiated a bill to strengthen penalties for industrial espionage. In December, the National Police Agency's investigation headquarters in South Korea established a new anti-espionage economic security investigation unit. This move put the issue of industrial information security, particularly the theft by the CCP, back into the spotlight in South Korean society. These actions are gradually changing the relationship between South Korea, Japan and China. Associate professor at Sung Kyung Kwan University, Kwon Seok Joon, in South Korea, believes that South Korea's exports of finished semiconductors and intermediate materials to China will decrease gradually. Another professor of international studies at Korea University and former president of the Korea Institute for International Economic Policy also noted that in the advanced semiconductor field, intermediate trade between Korea and China, as well as South Korea's greenfield investments in China, will be significantly impacted. If China succeeds in independently developing semiconductors in the future, the relationship between South Korea and China in both traditional and cutting-edge semiconductor markets 
will shift from one of demand and supply to that of competitors. Regarding the second point about the decline of South Korea's competitiveness in the Chinese import market, the Industrial Research Institute explained in the report that South Korea's market share in Chinese imports fell from 11% in 2015 to 6% in 2023. Especially in fields such as display panels and batteries, China is increasingly pursuing diversification, intensifying competition. It is noteworthy that China's push for import diversification is not unrelated to the competitive landscape between the U.S. and China. For example, as U.S.-China competition escalated, China announced in 2021 the establishment of a comprehensive strategic partnership with ASEAN. Data from China's General Administration of Customs shows that China's import share from ASEAN rose from 10.6% in 2014 to 15% in the first 11 months of 2023. On the other hand, media investigations have revealed that South Korea's reduced exports to China is also influenced by the policies of the CCP. A notable factor is the CCP's promotion of a culture of everyone reporting spies, which has been a deterrent for foreign investors. In July 2023, the CCP announced the official implementation of its revised anti-espionage law. On August 1st, the CCP's Ministry of State Security published a public social mobilization order through its WeChat public account, calling on all citizens to report spies and announcing rewards for successful reports. Surprisingly, just three days later, foreign-funded enterprises began to be investigated by the CCP. On August 4th, the Shanghai Securities Regulatory Bureau announced an investigation into U.S. investment bank Morgan Stanley. Prior to this, the CCP had conducted searches on several American consulting firms, including Bain and & Company and the Mintz Group, and conducted a cybersecurity review of the American chip manufacturer Micron Technology. These incidents intensified foreign enterprises' concerns about the investment and business environment in China. In a 2023 interview with the Financial Times, An Dukgan, Director General of the Trade Negotiations Bureau of the South Korean Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy, stated that the CCP government's policy to arbitrarily interfere with businesses and the dual circulation import substitution policy are the most important factors prompting foreign companies to reduce their risk exposure in China. He added that in the next decade, the trade structure between South Korea and China will change as the exchange of sensitive technologies faces increasing control and trade moves down the value chain. Valina Chakarova, director of the Austrian Institute for European and Security Policy, described the situation as digital totalitarianism with Chinese characteristics. Isaac Stonefish, a former Beijing-based correspondent for Newsweek and an observer of China, candidly expressed that it sends shivers down his spine. The South Korean media outlet The Chosun Ilbo has also pointedly stated that the Chinese communist regime makes no secret of the fact that its so-called national security is synonymous with the security of the Communist Party and Xi Jinping's regime. In response, Chinese-born economist Li Hengqing commented that foreign investments are currently fleeing and retreating from China, and domestic assets are also seeking ways to escape. There is a widespread lack of confidence in China's future and operating there comes with the risk of arbitrary detention by the Chinese government under the anti-espionage law. Such instances are numerous, causing considerable concern among foreign investors. As a result, many American companies are being extremely cautious or choosing to exit China. Governments of countries like the UK, the European Union, Japan, Australia and South Korea are reconsidering their options, which would exert even greater pressure on China. Another aspect is the belief that the CCP's dynamic zero-COVID policy and lockdown measures have dragged down the nation's economic growth. This has led to delays in large infrastructure and real estate projects, reduced demand for electronic equipment, and consequently, a decrease in South Korea's exports to China. In contrast, the U.S. has seen continued growth in eco-friendly car sales and expansion of 5G infrastructure, driving exports of South Korean electric vehicles and wireless communication equipment. In the automotive sector, since 2010, the U.S. has been actively promoting the return of businesses and supporting the construction of production facilities within its borders. Due to national security concerns, the U.S. has increased investments in electric vehicles, semiconductors, and infrastructure, leading to a continuous annual growth of 13% in exports of South Korean industrial machinery to the U.S. since 2010. Furthermore, environmental policies like the Executive Order on New Energy Vehicles and the Inflation Reduction Act, released by the Biden administration, have expanded the electric vehicle market, 
leading to a rapid increase in exports of South Korean precision chemical materials and electric vehicle batteries to the U.S. In fact, exports of precision chemical materials to the U.S. surged by 199% in 2022 following the signing of the Inflation Reduction Act. In wireless communications, in November 2023, the Biden administration decided to build a military wireless 5G network shared between the U.S. and South Korean military forces in the Korean Peninsula. This marks the first time the U.S. has decided to operate a joint wireless network overseas that can share information in real time during military operations. The U.S. aims to strengthen military cooperation with allies to counter threats from North Korea and others, while reinforcing the containment line against China, with South Korea as the first base. The U.S. government plans to establish similar networks with other Indo-Pacific allies, such as Japan and Australia. Under the leadership of South Korean President Yoon Suk-yeol, U.S.-South Korea relations are also continuously warming. In 2023, Yoon Suk-yeol, along with numerous South Korean corporate executives, visited Washington, D.C. In meetings with President Biden and Congress, Yoon advocated for strengthening U.S.-South Korea relations. In February of the same year, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with South Korean Foreign Minister Park Jin. According to Reuters, they discussed the importance of maintaining peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait and strengthening trilateral cooperation between the U.S., South Korea, and Japan. Additionally, the two sides signed a technology agreement, extending a 1992 pact for another 10 years. This is expected to further expand exchanges between the two countries in core technologies like semiconductors and space. Consequently, the South Korean Ministry of Trade, Industry, and Energy recommends in its analysis that, given the shifting significance of the U.S. and China in South Korea's international trade, it is crucial for South Korea to capitalize on the growing U.S. investments in areas like infrastructure, environmental conservation, and high-tech semiconductors as a means to boost its export levels to the U.S.